Captain's log, stardate 6942.0. We have encountered an alien vessel of unknown origin. All attempts to make contact have been met with a strange, pre-recorded response. But we must keep trying. Number one, hail the craft again. Aye, sir. Hello, and welcome to Voldoni Nation. Please remember, we mean you no harm. We intend only to spread fun. Lower your shields. Resistance is futile. Merry Christmas, Domination! <laughs> it's us! Your boys and girl! <laughs> <laughs> wow, sick intro, bro. Woo! I try. I'm gonna keep it festive. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas, ho ho ho! <laughs> Happy Xmas! Hey guys, or, or whatever you celebrate. Maybe you don't celebrate Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. 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 Maybe whatever. Maybe you don't celebrate anything. Just happy whatever day this is that it comes out on. May his noodly appendage touch you this holiday season. <laughs> You just said before, That's like two minutes ago, that we needed to keep this relatively like child friendly, and now you're talking about nude appendages exactly. touching people. Exactly, that was that I was laughing about too. I'm talking about the flag spaghetti monster. May his noodly appendage touch you this holiday season. Oh, Jim. Is it like no- don't let oh, noodly? Oh, I thought you. Oh, I thought you meant like for N U D E. Okay, uh, no noodly. Oh, uh, noodly, noodly. Don't let anybody's noodly appendage touch you this hey, holiday season. don't you discriminate against my fellow pastafarians. <laughs> oh my God. So, some pre-show stuff before we actually get, like, started for realsies. I do think we should make a conscious effort to make this particular episode a non-explicit one, so, like, no swearing. Just in case, like, people want to listen to this in the car with their kids when they're driving to and from, like, family events. <laughs> Jim, you're asking too much. <laughs> This is the hill you want to die on? Yeah. So I hope everyone's nice and comfy on this Christmas day or whenever you happen to be listening to it. Maybe you're in the car driving to a family or friend function. Maybe you're sitting alone drinking wine. Either way, still fun. I'm sitting alone drinking wine right now. Ooh, what? Do you have some for me? If you want to drive three hours to get it, sure. Yeah, I drive anywhere to get it. Oh, wait, no, that's not very (laughs) kids-friendly. That's so creepy as well. I feel like the swear. there's been zero swearing so far, but there has been like a 100% increase in just creepiness. <laughs> we have definitely compensated for that somehow. Mm. On that happy note, let's talk about Christmas. Christmas. So what is everybody's favorite Christmas carol? Because I have some very strong opinions about this. Jingle bells. Christmas carol? Christmas song. Doesn't have to be like Good King Wenceslas. Ah, uh, Christmas carol, Silent Night, but Christmas song, Last Christmas. Interesting. You know what? I'm very partial to Last Christmas, which is very sad because Liana's family have decided that we're doing Whamageddon this year, which is <laughs> nobody's allowed to listen to Last Christmas. <gasps> What? what? Yeah, you, well, you're not allowed to listen to Last Christmas. If you accidentally happen to hear it, you're out of the running. Like, and it's last person standing wins. But that's such a brilliant song. That's a sh- that's a that's a really bad tradition. This is a weird tradition. You can listen to covers of it. You just can't listen to the Wham version. Why? I don't know. It's a Christmas challenge, and I don't know. I'm weird. Okay. But what if? You, okay. If you wait, even if you accidentally listen to it, it's not good. Yeah. No. Even if you like walk into a shopping center and it's playing on the stereo, like you're out. Gotcha. Do you want me to like s- like play it to Liana sometime? No, we're not allowed to sabotage anyone <laughs> until Christmas Eve when it becomes like no holds barred. So given oh. that this is being released on Christmas <laughs> Day, I don't know yet how it's oh. gone. What, what do you win? <laughs> oh, again, trying to keep it child friendly here. But the specific wording that we said was that the winner gets a treat from everybody else and they get to choose what the treat is. Oh. And it was very vague as to what the boundary of treat was. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That, that's weird. Sounds like yeah. a start of a- That's- uh, that- okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, may the odds be ever in your favour, Jim. Second question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? <sighs> uh, yes, absolutely. <sighs> Thank you, Ken. Uh, I take it you have a different thought on this one, Emma? I- I-, I I'm torn, right? Yeah. I say- f- just for just for lols, I do say that yes, it is a Christmas movie, but I, it, I don't know. I, I'm just torn in two different directions. It just happens to part like just happen at Christmas. That doesn't therefore make it a Christmas f- film. 
I, I feel like know, we've had this like, argument before and I feel like I've changed my mind about 16 times over the last four years. <laughs> because but, it's so controversial. Uh, it is. I've had this exact same discussion with with some of them, with some other people in the past and I, I'm not totally sold on the it just happens at Christmas mm, thing. I agree. Because, like, A, John McClane is travelling to try and reconcile with his wife on Christmas because, like, that's quite an emotional day. Mm-hmm. And B, crap, I can't remember his name, Hans, the Alan Rickman's character. Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber uh, picked that day because he knew it would be their Christmas party. So, like, Christmas is integral to the plot of Die Hard. And it has a happy Christmas ending. And it does, yeah. <laughs> and a Christmas gift is the crux of the, the finale. Mm. What's more Christmassy than that? Having like a Christmas present being like the thing that resolves the climax of the movie. No, look, I, I get it. I, I told you I'm, I'm I'm torn, but like, you know, I, I, I don't know. But then I remember also having this conversation. I can't even remember who it was with. Maybe it was, <clears> was it like when we were, no, was it when we were camping that we were having these conversations? No, because Damien wasn't there. And I remember we were also chatting about Love Actually and whether that was a Christmas movie because somebody mm. else said that, that wasn't a Christmas movie. And then I think it was Liana and I came together and were like, no, it is because it like there were certain things about it that I don't know. There was this whole thing. Mm. I remember having this heated discussion and it was Die Hard mm. and it was also Love Actually and there was this argument as to whether they were or weren't. Die Hard sounds like something Jim would have brought up at camping. Yeah. Probably for sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I get the sense we're not going to resolve this discussion tonight. So uh, anyone who's interested, tweet at us. What do you think? Is, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? <laughs> <laughs> Are we waiting right now? Yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> okay. is, this, is this not live? Are they not uh, live live tweeting at us? Yeah, so a um, little peek behind the curtain here. I know I know this is a Christmas episode. A Merry Christmas, everyone. But we're actually recording this before the last episode even came out. Uh, oh, wow. We are actually very prepared. Yeah. Wait, what? Ooh. Although Jimmy Boy's a busy boy and mm. he's, he's got a lot of functions on in the next couple of weeks before Christmas. Good work, Jim. Thanks, Ken. You're okay, future Jim. What I mean is it's going to be a challenge to edit this one. Oh. Favorite Christmas food. Go. Ham. Ham. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably oh, uh, man. maple glaze with cloves. Cloves. Mm. I, could, I could do without. Maple glaze for sure. I hate biting into the cloves. But at the same time, they taste really good. You don't eat mm. the cloves. Yeah, you don't. Like, but I've actually bitten into them before, and I've, you know, it's just. Well, that yeah, was, that's a that's that a, was sad a rookie feeling. error, Ken. It was. It really was. It was the first ham I had. Well, whoever gave you that ham was not very kind to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, every year. Like the best thing about Christmas is that so because all of our families in New Zealand, so we have um, Christmas with family friends whenever we're in Australia and mum's always on the ham. But my mum <laughs> is a perfectionist, so she makes a practice ham. Woo! And I'm <gasps> so excited for double ham. Oh, my God. It's- can I come? It's the greatest time of the year. And also, Ken, do you know what else I get around Christmas time, oh specifically God, on Christmas the- Eve? Oh, God, is is it those cookies? No, oh, wait, no, it is duck fat duck potatoes. Fat potatoes. <gasps> oh, yes. Duck fat potatoes and <laughs> a bloody <laughs> roast turkey on Christmas Eve. Sign me up. I'm so excited. And I bet you when, it, well, when everybody listens to this, you know what? I'm just going to say this now because I'm preempting it. It was great. My Christmas <laughs> Eve dinner was delicious. <laughs> and 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 I was there too, guys. No, I, you I had I had a great time. You don't know time. where my parents live now, so. God damn it. <laughs> you can't even a, just rock up. Emma's been a completely <laughs> terrible friend after after her parents moved. She's kept it after a mystery. It's a good strategy there, Emma. Se- security through obscurity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I'm very excited. Duck fat potatoes are great. Um, mm-hmm. And ham. And I think we actually may be doing a different ham glaze this year. I, I believe there was something about a potentially a bourbon on it. That's a risky move. I should really come and try that one out just in case. No, no, no. I'll, I'll test it out on the on the um, man the practice ham. And if it's You're no the good, worst. We, we, damn it, Emma. It. He's just trying to. He's just trying to get amongst it. <laughs> I know. He is. He's just trying to get in the spirit. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited. Oh, I thought she was going to say, I'm so sorry, but she's not sorry at all. No. She's really not. Um, you've known me how many years now, Ken? Like, come on, man. Yeah. And how long have I been trying to get into your Christmas? 
Yeah, I know. How, however long it is, and I've known you. <laughs> yeah. God, how long is it? Far out. Like no, don't don't do it. Don't calculate it. More than a decade. Oh God. Oh God. Better part of fifteen years. Thirteen years. Yep, sounds about right. Yeah, we've been out of school eleven, and then I met you two years before that. Yep. Oh God. Yep. Oh, two, God. Tw- thirteen years. About like just shy of thirteen. Ken's been trying to get into my family Christmas for thirteen years, <laughs> and it hasn't happened. She tells me every year about those duck. Fat potatoes and that practice ham. Every year she <laughs> gloats about it. Every year. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh. I'm pretty sure last year when we had our, our little secret Santa get together, I had some ham that I gave you, didn't I? You did not. No, I'm pretty sure I did. You're really letting him down there, Emma. No, I thought I did. Maybe I just ate it in front of you. That sounds. This is future Jim talking now. Any function that we have <laughs> over the pres- like following days, uh, Bring ham. Yeah, but then I get less ham, and I don't think you understand how much I like ham. This is not a zero-sum game, Emma. Well, technically it is for <laughs> one specific ham, but th- there's more than one ham. Mm. Bring mm. ham is all I'm saying. Yes, please. Maybe, bring maybe ham. our picnic next week we all need to Ooh. bring ham. I'm on board for this. <laughs> Just a ham picnic. Crap, we forgot to do our names. Ha, we are the Urken. Emma Pyre and... Invader Jim. Merry Christmas, Christmas you, you filthy, filthy animals. animals. And welcome to our Christmas Invader Zim episode. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. Look, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, you filthy animals wanted this in our fantasy season. We told you to get tracked. Yeah. <laughs> we had a plan. People never, you just got to trust the plan and just go with it and Merry Christmas. Unless they're my plans. If they're my plans, <laughs> don't follow all the instructions. You'll just get confused. <laughs> This is like step step two and then goes to like step eight. He's like, step what? Eight. What happened? Step, step three. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty sure everybody should should probably know, but we had a lot of people try and uh, what's what's the word here? Troll us? Dominate? Twist our arms? Dom, Dom, yeah, a couple of seasons ago in requesting Invader Zim, but we said no at the time because we did have this plan, this long long plan, and we also just thought, you know what? If you're gonna try and be really rude about it, we're gonna be even more inclined to say yeah that. you just made it zim possible and we never ask for suggestions again <laughs> <laughs> merry christmas you filthy animals yeah it's okay we did willow so you know i'm happy <laughs> we did yeah one of us got a cat out of that <laughs> i mean yes. look i still probably would have gotten the cat but um maybe potentially it wouldn't have been called you know what i think it was because we were saying willow so much that the name stuck in my head although his actual name his his name that he was when i adopted him was oreo but i changed it so what did anyway. you two think of invader zim i love invader zim invader zim is a great show it was lots of fun it's such a shame it got cancelled although yeah. it is like very dark but apparently, and we'll get to that that when I uh, talk about me fun facts a bit later, Ooh. but it's actually darker. <laughs> but what? Nickelodeon made them cut out a lot of stuff. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it is good. And I think that's why, like, now it's got this cult following, um, but it's all, like, you know, people our age and and maybe maybe a little bit younger because it's a little bit more, you know, it's cool now. But I don't think, like, I remember enjoying it, maybe not, like, absolutely being obsessed with it, but I do remember enjoying mm. it when I was a kid. But obviously I think it's the same as, like, anything now when you watch it as an adult. There's just so many different levels to it um, that you don't pick up on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I really love all the little touches in the animation. It's so good. It's mm. so good. Oh, Although, man. like, my family didn't have Foxtel, pay TV, cable, whatever you want to call it, when, when I was a kid. So, like, this is the first time I've ever seen the show. Oh, really? Me too. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen, man. like, bits and pieces, but I've never, like, every time I saw it on TV, he was always in his lab with Gurr on the side. That was, that was always what I saw, but I never saw him outside of the lab. Gurr is the best character. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. I love him. Excuse me, Jim. Can you stop swearing, please? Sorry. This is You're a- right. Goddamn, Gur is the best character. <laughs> I love him so um, much. He is he is honestly so great. Oh man. And I just love when he's in his little dog suit and he just like he goes to enter the door or something and he just like zips it up and then he zips just, it oh up. Oh my god, it's so great. <laughs> there was that whole transformation sequence in like episode three or something. We had like backgrounds and stuff and he just ends up stepping into the suit and then he just zips it zips it up normally. And yeah. I'm like, ah. 
Yeah. So another Christmas question for you. Sorry, another Christmas question for you two now that the cat's out of the bag as to what this episode is. Hmm. Which of Gurr's requests to Santa would you uh, have asked for? Oh, what was the list? I actually could not make out what he said. There were so many. The only two I can think of off the top of my head are two balls of glue to be my friend and I want to dance naked. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Two balls of glue to be my friend. And there was there was so many, and then it like zones out, and then comes back in because he's obviously been there for a while. And Santa's like, "Get this kid away from me!" <laughs> but I cannot remember any off the top of my head. But I do remember laughing. But I guess we should probably explain that what we did for this was we watched the pilot episode and a couple of other episodes, and then there is a Christmas episode which. Is it in season two or is it in season one? I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember. But there was a Christmas episode, which is what essentially we're going to be, I guess, basing tonight on. Sorry, I've got his list if you want. Oh, yeah, uh, the things that we see him request are, I want me a barrel of floss, two balls of glue to be my friends, I want to go dancing naked, a chair made of cheese, and a table <laughs> made of cheese. <laughs> Um, I mean, I kind of want one of those. It depends what cheese. I do like cheese. Well, you'd have to eat it pretty quick. i got to go with two balls of glue to be my friends. I'm going chair cheese. You shouldn't let that sit out for too long. <laughs> oh, Ken, you're making me like hate you a little bit more every time. Uh, I'm hoping it t- like you know goes 360 and like hits a turning <laughs> point where it k- resets. Well, back to you really like me. Three, you want it to be a 180, mate. But mm, cool, true. Aren't you ah, supposed to be it. really good at math? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why is that? Aren't you an engineer? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, didn't I, you do extension maths? I forgot about didn't that. Didn't you do like four <laughs> unit math? <laughs> I, I did. But hey, that was years ago. I chucked that on my notes. No, you thought I was going to go racist then, Ken, but I didn't. To be fair, I did too. It was because you're clever. No. Ooh. It's Christmas. And then I remembered that Ken actually did, like can, Ken actually conforms <laughs> to that stereotype and did four unit maths. Damn did it. four unit math and he's a bloody engineer. Yay! I make my ancestors <laughs> proud. <laughs> Um, Oh, I would go for probably the barrel of floss. Barrel of floss. No, that's terrible. I think I'd go for the two uh, two blobs of glue that are my friends. (laughs) You guys are super cute. Yeah, because that way they'd stick around. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, So does one of you want to explain what Invader Zim is to our listeners who potentially, like you, have not watched it before? Yes. So, Invader Sim is about Invader called Zim. He's from the oh. Urken Empire. And the Urken Empire is a uh, planet with an Amada, who, um, where all the citizens go around and take, uh, taking over other planets. Uh, we, we have a, a bit of an outcast, uh, called a Zim, who was so violent in his previous invasion attempt that he invaded his own planet. <laughs> so. <laughs> He got so excited. <laughs> he was banished to, uh, what was it, the Fucordium, I think it was called? Yeah. yeah. Yes, he was, uh, and he was supposed to be uh, making sandwiches and uh, making uh, s- serving stuff. Maybe ham, maybe, you know, duck fat <laughs> potatoes. You really, maybe you really on this. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But, yes, uh, he, you know, he, he found out that um, there, was a, the, there was a laser show that involved uh, assigning people to invading other planets, so he quit being banished and got assigned <laughs> the planet Earth <laughs> to uh, invade. You knew that was a thing. Yes. No, you could just quit being banished. Maybe that's what happened in Man of Steel. They were just like, you know what? <laughs> Done. <laughs> I quit. And yeah, well, Earth wasn't actually on the uh, on the list of uh, planets that were supposed to be invaded by the Urken Empire, but uh, they just decided to give him something to do. Yeah, they, they sent him away. <laughs> And like six months later, he like shows up, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, Zim, you you're still alive. You're still alive. <laughs> oh, and also, uh, every every invader that gets assigned a planet gets given a robot to uh, help them invade uh, the planet. But uh, due to his bad reputation, he was just he was given Gur that was both uh, <laughs> inferior inferior and superior to all the other robots. What does Gur stand for, Ken? He was built out of trash. I do not know, actually. 
He was built out of trash. Yes. That's the joke. Grr, garbage. The other robots are all called special. I think they're called like specialized information retrieval robots. Oh. Sirs. Mm. Sirs. And then Gur comes out and he's like, my name is Gur. And he says, what does the G stand for? And Gur goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, he's so cute. I just love mm. him. He's great. He's so cute. His little dog <laughs> outfit is so gosh dang cute. And yes. all he wants to do is dance and eat. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, yes. I love him. Invaders. Zim ends up in Earth and uh, he needs to blend in with the humans. So he uh, gets himself a human disguise, uh, builds himself a house and uh, tries to find the human's weakness. Uh, Gur does the same thing and uh, gets himself a dog suit. Uh, That's very, very realistic. So uh, no one can find out. Yeah. So basically Mm -hmm. the whole premise of the the movie is, or the show is that he essentially has the ability to take over Earth but he fails and basically just spends time in school. And there's like a kid who <laughs> believes that, well, knows that he's an alien and tries to basically out, like, out I him. I always forget his name. Dib. Dib, that's right. Dib yeah. and his sister Gaz and their father, Professor Membrane. Yeah. So we should probably talk about the specific episode that we're discussing tonight because, like, Invader Zim is, is like a series and, like, some episodes, like, sorry, Zim's plan throughout the series itself is kind of nebulous and vague because it's a comedy show for children. And adults. Yeah, this, <laughs> that's true. The specific episode that we're reviewing tonight he actually has a plan that he enacts and he tries to get you know the job of conquering the earth done uh, and that episode is called the most horrible xmas ever and it's christmas related Woo! merry christmas yeah filthy animals yes so i guess jim did you want to take us through what his plan was or what the i guess the plan was in that episode yeah so the episode has a weird framing device so two million years in the future mr sludgy <laughs> the robot snowman is recounting the story of the most horrible Christmas ever. Zim needs Earth money to seem more like a regular human and kidnaps a charity Santa so that he can work out why people do what they say. Zim builds a liquid metal suit with the knowledge that he gains so that he can pretend to be Santa, recognizing that people would obey someone so universally regarded as wholesome and selfless. He tricks humanity into building a giant teleporter that will send all humans to their doom. The suit begins to malfunction, however, and he begins to act more and more like the jolly version of Santa, eventually losing control completely. Dib tells his father, Professor Membrane, that Santa is trying to take over the world. The Professor holds a grudge against Santa for bringing him socks instead of Uranium-238 when he was a child. The Professor gives Dib access to his anti-Santa arsenal so that he may finally have his revenge. And that's pretty much it. (laughs) So, Jingle jail for the non-believer! Oh, man. So what did you guys think of his plan? Amazing! Uh, Yeah, I uh, thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it was really good, but there was just some execution problems. Yeah. Oh, there was two. uh, So I gave it an 8 out of 10 for this plan. 8 out of 10. Wow. I thought everything was, like, it was a great start. Everything worked really well at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But the Santis, uh, there's two points that made it bad was that the Santa suit malfunctioned in a very, very bad and weird way. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could have programmed that to be better if he had such advanced technology, I think. And yeah. the second yeah. problem with his plan was I thought teleporting everyone to the Urken Empire was kind of stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What do you rate this plan, Emma? I I think I give it a six. A six? Yeah. Um, look, it wasn't a bad plan, but I think that there was a couple of, and Ken's kind of touched on the, the main two that, I guess is part of my plan later, but like there were silly errors that if they had just been changed, it would have had a potentially a a very different outcome. Yeah. I feel similarly, but like the way I interpreted what happened is that there was just so much information about Santa that the suit couldn't handle it. And that was why it malfunctioned. So I'm I'm inclined to give him slightly more points for effort. So I'm going to go with seven. Yeah. Like I do, like I do get it. And obviously, because I'm sure probably a lot of the, our listeners haven't um, watched this episode potentially. And I do uh, highly recommend it, but basically the more Christmas cheer or like if anything, Christmas related kind of like touch the suit, it just absorbs absorbed it and became more Christmassy <laughs> yeah. um, until eventually like um, Zim is basically kind of like pulled inside the the suit and kind of just is <laughs> yeah. lost essentially um, and like overrun by, by Santa. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a couple of small things that probably, yeah. Um, so it's not terrible overall, um, but, yes, it could have been better. 
Yeah, no, I get that. You know what I just remembered is my favorite part of the entire episode. Mm-hmm. When they have the mid episode return to like the framing device with um the snowman telling the story, and there's that little kid who's like <laughs> calling out all of the logic errors in the story, mm-hmm. and he just picks her up and puts her under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that so yeah, much. That was so like, cute. It is great. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought um the plan suffers a bit from like everything Invader Zim does, like not really thinking things through enough, and like you know not putting enough effort in in the planning stages. Yeah, but like a for effort, man. Yeah, like I watched um, an episode, this is just like, this is me just shit talking now, but there was, I watched an episode again this afternoon and it was where basically it starts raining and then I did think and then he finds out that he's like rain or water like burns him (laughs) and I was like... How long has he been on? Because the at the episodes as we're watching them, I don't know what order I'm watching them in because I think your plexus was a bit messed up, Jim. So who knows which mm. episodes we've actually watched? But uh, but um, anyway, so he finds out that he's like um, basically allergic to to water or whatever, <laughs> and so Dib tries to use this against him and like jumps in puddles, and then they like have like this water balloon fight, and then Zim just like goes, he's like, okay, on Monday you've got basically you've got all weekend to prepare, Dib, and on Monday we're having a water to fight and so dib like like with water balloons and so dib like makes this machine that's like this backpack that like has like a water cooler on the back of it and then it just like fills with water and then launches a, a water mm-hmm. balloon but it was at a hot you thought it was zim standing there but it was a hologram and what actually is that zim's off in his bloody control tower or whatever in his mm. lab and he's gotten this like satellite or some sort of space something or other and he sucked up all of the water from like fish <laughs> tanks and like the nearby like lakes and rivers and there's like a beached whale that you see and he's just sucked up all this water and then just like puts it in this massive um, water balloon and then launches that and then just destroys everything <laughs> and he's just like what? What is happening? Like, it was just, oh, uh, it was crazy. But it did make me think and I was just like, and maybe, I don't know, but like how has he not come across water in his time on yeah. I have. I had another question, like lots of other questions like that when I was watching like the Christmas episode. Mm. First up, like why would the professor ask for uranium-238? Uranium-238 is non-fissile. Oh, okay. Look, I, I don't know what you any uranium <laughs> does, so... It went over so there, my head. there's two main types of uranium, uranium-238 and uranium-235. Uranium-230, like the two are mixed together and it's very hard to separate them apart. But if you can, uranium-235 is the one that you can use to make bombs. What do you do th- with 238 then? Uh, mm, very little. There are some nuclear reactors that can use it, but it's not that common. Well, maybe he wanted to create something. Yeah, but you still need uranium two thirty five as like a, a like a Kickstarter for those maybe reactors. He I think had two thirty five. Yeah. yeah maybe <laughs> anyway, he needed a two thirty eight. Um, I very much empathised with young Professor Membrane receiving <laughs> socks instead of what he wanted. That sucks when you're a kid. But now I can't get enough socks. Like, please, I need more. <laughs> socks are great, actually. <laughs> socks I are great. I actually love receiving gifts that are like the standard typical things that you just can't be bothered to go buy for yourself. Yeah. Like underwear That's why people and socks. Get them for you. Thanks, mum. Speaking of presents, there was one line in particular in the in the episode that I um I really like <laughs> had a real roller coaster of emotions with as they as they said it. There's a line in the show where they say if there's one thing humans can't resist, it's a fat man with presence. <laughs> uh, I thought he said like presence as in like, you know, with a P R E S E N C E. Yeah. To yeah. which I was like, right here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you're not fat. Yeah, I am. Maybe you would talk after Christmas. Maybe maybe you're big boned. No. I'm just big fat. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it, what is funny like thinking about this episode it really strikes me like zim's plan really strikes me as something ken would come up with for one of his plans yes like endear oh. everyone endear yourself to everyone <laughs> with like jolliness and kindness and then sweep the legs out from under them at the last minute <laughs> god damn it yeah <laughs> is that but then also but then also like actually what happened in terms of like realize that being nice to people and like just become nice <laughs> Like yes. just become Santa. Be like, oh, everybody's so happy and there's so much cheer. Maybe I don't need to take over the world. Let's all just be friends. Yay! 
Yay! It's like that okay, chick from Mean Girls. That chick from Mean Girls. I just <laughs> wish we could all just make a baker cake and uh, made out of rainbows or whatever it is. <laughs> do, you even, do you even go to the school? I just have so many feelings. <laughs> Oh, man. So what are we going with? We're going with, I'm going with seven. Emma, you're going with six. And Ken, you're going with eight? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Average yes. seven. Yeah, that gives Zim a total of 21. Well done, Zim. Which Woo! is res- it's pretty respectable. Look, it's, it's, it's no not Zod. Worse. It's no, it's no Zod. <laughs> it's better than Skynet. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're doing all right, Zim. You're doing you're all doing right. You're doing okay. Not, yeah. Are we ready for some fun facts? Woo! Always. Fun facts with Emma. All hail the Emma Pyre. <laughs> so what fun facts do you have for us tonight, Emma? So the character of Miss Bitters, um, who is the school teacher, was confirmed by the creators as non-human. Um, so she has snake-like movements, the ability to levitate and demonic outbursts, which I I was watching it and I was like, surely she's not like, is she also an alien and it's going to mm-hmm. come out or whatever? But mm-hmm. apparently it's just like the creators have just said, yeah, look, she's, she's not human. Human. She's I think we don't know what she is. About her. We just don't know exactly what she is. I think there was some Halloween episode somewhere that she was meant to be some sort of fairy something or other, but then got hit by a fly zapper or something. And I was like, oh, okay. Anyway, Ooh. but she um, also was voiced by Lucille Bliss, who was most notably um, Smurfette. In the old TV shows. Uh, yeah. So, that's unfortunately, fun. she has passed now. Oh, um, that's sad. She was Smurfette. This is a real roller coaster you took us on there, Emma. Yeah, you're welcome. It's, uh, I like to keep things interesting. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> the creator, Vasquez, um, claimed to come up with the idea in under an hour while he was lying in bed unable to sleep. Um, and he was 22 at the time. Really makes you wonder about your life. Like all those times when you've just been lying in bed being like, oh, man, what am I doing? Like I could have come <laughs> up with a TV show. Hey, Ken came up with this show. Woo! Yeah, but he wasn't 22 and what what awards have we won? Except yeah, for that's, the, that's... the award of love of our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Do we uh, have that? No, I'm sure I'm about to receive like abusive emails and we probably have by the time this has come out. I so. appreciate your love. Um, Call me. So, so yeah, so the creator Vasquez, he liked the idea of an alien with the power and the technology to take, well, basically to overthrow Earth, um, but that he just kept failing and spent time in school. <laughs> so that's <laughs> basically the whole premise of the show. Zim strikes me as the kind of person who, like, loves his job so much he doesn't really see the goal anymore. He's just, like, in it for the experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just he just likes doing things. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the name Zim actually came from what the creator called his girlfriend's Tamagotchi. So I think there's a lot of talk around, is it in Starship, oh, my God. Um, oh my Starship God. Troopers. Starship Troopers. Why could I not say the word Starship then? Thank you, Jim. There is a character called Sim somewhere there, in there. Anyway, so there's a mm-hmm. lot of talk about potentially where that, um, that's where it came from, but then the creator guy was just like, no, nah, that's what I named my girlfriend's Tamagotchi. <laughs> So, so like, but okay, the Tamagotchi cool. was named after the character from Star Trek Troopers, right? No, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, so, the, yeah, so the creator, so there's a fair few facts on him, um, but his most popular work before this, and this probably gives uh, reason as to why the show kind of is what it is, um, but he had a comic book entitled Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Holy <laughs> crap. Who would attack anyone who irritates him, which, you know, is a, is a real mood. <laughs> You know, that's it. a mood. It's it's a mood. Anyway, so this was, um, so Invader Zim was one of the first animated shows to merge 2D and 3D animation. So it actually Ooh. caused a lot of um, difficulties as they were making it because um, it was all mm. a bit strange. But it's yeah. held up pretty well. Mm. Yeah, it's actually not really bad. Really well. Yeah. So even though it's held up really well and we all love it, um, it was cancelled due to poor ratings and there was quite a few budget issues, I believe, as well. Um, So several of the season two episodes didn't actually air. There was a few that were unfinished, including um, plans for a final TV movie named Invader Dib. (laughs) which would have been interesting. (laughs) That would have been fun. Yeah, so in 2010 they started running a few, um, well, rerunning a few episodes to see if a a sequel would be worth doing to sort of see if if it had held up. Um, And it actually came in second and it was beaten only by Avatar. So people enjoyed it. Mm. 
Nice. Yep. Um, so I know I mentioned earlier in the show tonight as well that there was several scenes involving particularly violent or graphic moments and they were cut mm-hmm. from the uh, show. There was even, uh, I think there was one scene where Invader Scooge started eating his own skin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was to survive. Yeah, there was an episode apparently called Hobo Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> right, so he started eating. I don't even know why. I didn't look into it too much, but I was just like, what? Um, but uh, I think the the creators and the um, the people who were creating, um, designing and drawing the show and pulling all together, um, they wanted to get uh, essentially they wanted to um, win, I guess, against Nickelodeon. So they actually put in it's a bit of an Easter egg for people, but it's a single um, image and it's of Gur covered in blood. <laughs> Oh. It's just in oh. there as a single frame, and apparently it's allegedly in in about fourteen episodes, oh, wow. and it was just in there as a bit of a get tracked kind of thing. <laughs> Damn, that's gross. It is gross. Hey. I'll give you that one. We haven't come wide eighty, but I'll give you that one. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a really cool fun fact: is that uh, Mark Hamill was a, the original voice for the pilot episode. Ooh. Oh, I think I just heard D screaming through time. <laughs> you imagine, but he was cut um, before it was before the episode was completed, just because they thought he was a little bit too well known. Which I do understand. He's got a very, very well known voice, distinctive voice, at least for his like animation work. Yeah, yeah, like it'd basically be like the Joker <laughs> was in Batman. Yeah, him. <laughs> yeah it would, I, I imagine it would have been a very similar voice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him really do different voices for anything, really. I've always been able to pick that it was him. Fire Lord. Yeah, I never picked that Fire Lord Ozai was him, Mm. at least the first time I watched the show. (laughs) Apparently he phoned in a few of those episodes. Which one? Like Avatar, sorry. Oh, I haven't. Yeah, do do it over a call or something like that. That's why I have no idea what you're talking about. So... In the recording sessions of a few of these episodes, some some of them got a little bit spirited that they actually disrupted production of Dora the Explorer, which was happening <laughs> next door. <laughs> Imagine Dora the Explorer with invaders in background. <laughs> Just like Dora the Explorer in the background, you can hear doom! <laughs> Doom! Oh man, I can imagine that would have been brilliant. So, uh, so if you guys remember in the pilot episode, Ken mentioned it earlier around how when Zim um, and Ger they're sort of choosing outfits or I guess disguises um, through the yeah. machine. You know how there's one that is like Ugh, too um, too stinky, and this one's too ugly. Um, too ugly. Too ugly. <laughs> too ugly. Too stinky. Too stinky. Um, there's actually images of the creator and the director. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's outstanding. Yeah, it was actually self burn. Those are rare. Yeah. So I think it was the creator who was the ugly one, and the director was the stinky one. Just as a <laughs> little side note. Um, so there's, if you guys remember any scenes where Gert is drinking, and then he seems to have a bit of a coughing fit after he drinks. Have you guys noticed yeah. that? Can have a coughing fit right now. <laughs> 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 Those are actually real, and the reason for it is that the um, voice actor has asthma, and he would aggravate his breathing when he was imitating Gur doing his particular drinking. So he would just like start coughing uncontrollably <laughs> afterwards, and they've just they left just, it in. <laughs> wow, that's great! <laughs> oh, Gur's the best. <laughs> Um, so Richard Horvitz, who um, did end up getting the voice of Zim in the end, he was also in another great Nickelodeon TV show from the 90s. Um, he played Daggett in The Angry Beavers. Yeah. Oh, never saw that one either. Oh, my God, you guys. Oh, I, I watched that. I watched that. I've seen maybe an episode here or there. But I didn't yeah. remember which beaver was which beaver. I never found out. I was just like, oh, <laughs> it's the brown one and the blonde one. And the blonde one. <laughs> yes. Um. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you picked up on this, Jim. You may have because it does have a point of reference to your favorite movie. But Kevin McDonald, who voiced the almighty tallest purple also mm-hmm. voiced pleakly. I did pick up on that. He, that was, he has a very distinctive voice, he that does. character. <laughs> he does. He does. And um, it was great. And I do love that guy. I love the tallest. That's such like a fun concept for like 
a ruling, like a, a head of state, yep. like, oh, the tallest person gets to be our leader. Like, yeah. that's just as good a rationale as any, <laughs> really, for any sort of dictatorship. Ah. Oh. Emma's our leader. Do you, yeah. She, did you know what I also love though? When they were like in the in the pilot episode, when they're kind of like distributing the the planets that the guys are going to go and um, invade or whatever. There's mm. that one guy. And he's like, oh, like you're going to go to the, the what is it the the planet of the, um, the killer rats the, or something. The, the mauling yeah. the mauling rats or whatever it is. And then he's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you've you've grown over the summer. And he's like, due to that little <laughs> growth, you're now going <laughs> to the the planet with the the, the largest comfort for your couch yes. <laughs> or something like that and I was like what and then the next guy that comes up gets sent to the planet of the mauling rats oh <laughs> yeah. poor kid <laughs> oh god oh man so a couple more here um Every every time that there is a shot of the Earth, um, sort of like so from outer space or whatever, looking down at Earth, there is um, it actually shows a hurricane about to hit Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why, but it's a thing. Right. Okay. Someone doesn't like Florida. Someone Florida. clearly doesn't like Florida. And I think it was a, supposed to be like a it looked like a Category Five or something like that. So Florida was about to get messed up. Wow. And the last one here, which I actually thought was really cool, and I did have some thoughts about it, but if the show wasn't cancelled, if, if if we follow, I guess, the whole Dib storyline, he was going to discover that he was actually a clone of Professor Membrane and not actually his son. Ooh. <laughs> Kind of sad for Dip. Yeah. Can you imagine that? It makes sense, though. Yeah. So he's not as gifted as his dad, so, like, I wonder what's going on there. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah. Nature versus nature. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. Potentially. But um, it does make me wonder about the sister, though. Yeah. But, I remember yeah. hearing a rumour that she is, like, genetically engineered to be, like, security for him, for Dib. Mm, that would make sense. To be, like, a bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. That would make sense, actually. If, if that was his clone and then he created something to be, to blend in and just always be kind of near him, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Although I love her. She is, like, pure, like, true neutral. Sorry, <laughs> pure, like, lawful neutral. She's great. Yeah. No, she's she's awesome. I do. Oh. I do really like her. Yeah. Um, she does sometimes remind me of D as well. Who, where are the other characters on the alignment? Gur is definitely chaotic neutral. Zim is chaotic evil. Yes. Dib is probably- Lawful good? Uh, lawful evil. Oh. Lawful evil. evil. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess he's doing it for himself rather than the, than the community. Yeah. Yeah. What about, did you guys see the episode where he, he needed a friend? Yes. Oh, I love that episode so much. <laughs> First, we will test your electrical resistance. <laughs> and your absorbency. Your absorbency, absorbency yeah. <laughs> and then he gets that guy and that, that what's that kid's name? And he just Keith? like, oh, Keith. Oh, uh, Keith. We can go to the circus tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man. You love the circus. <laughs> oh, that's great. And he's like, don't, and then he goes, Zim goes into his um, lab and he's like, Gerd, don't let anybody in the house within 30 seconds <laughs> let's <laughs> let's keith in because keith's like i'll make you some waffles <laughs> oh it's oh. so good oh it's a brilliant show i got one for you that's kind of only tangentially related to the show if you're interested i'm always I interested am. jim do you guys know where the word nickelodeon comes from no i do not nickelodeon is a term from the very early days of cinema so like in the very early days of cinema, most movies were, like, super short. They were normally, like, a couple minutes long. And they weren't considered, like, an artistic medium like they are now. Mm. The Odeon was a famous and, you know, like, properly, like, well-regarded theatre. Oh, yeah. And a nickel Odeon was a place where you would go to get, like, cheap, lowbrow entertainment. Normally, like, Ooh. short films, live theatre and music. Oh, okay. Oh. Interesting. That's cool. That is very cool. Hmm. That was a real fun mm. fact, Jim. Thank you. Yeah. For that. Thank you. I know that probably sounded a little bit sarcastic, but I genuinely <laughs> meant it. Like that was actually quite interesting. No, thank you. So we should probably get on to our um, <laughs> our actual plans then. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yeah, I was moving right along. This is meant to be like the the no effort Christmas episode. Oh, I have put zero effort in. I'm coming up Ooh. with my plan like as of five minutes ago. All right, apparently I'm going first. Go invade a gym. Actually, no, wait. No, it only makes sense for Emma to go first. She's the tallest. Oh, <laughs> oh you did this on purpose. Mm. Okay. <laughs> oh, the great tall one. Please share your wisdom with us. The tallest. <laughs> The tallest. The tallest. Actually, do you know what is always really good when when you hang out with someone that's taller than you? 
And you, when you're a tall person, you hang out with someone that's taller than you, and you can actually look up at someone. It's great. Oh, Do you anyway. want us to start wearing heels? If you could. Are you extolling the virtues of having a role model? Ugh, Jim, no. <laughs> someone to look up to? <laughs> Physical height. <laughs> I look nice. up to no one. Except me. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we were saying before, look, I don't think his plan was that terrible. Ken, you kind of alluded to it earlier that there was a couple of points, I guess, that I guess were my key things that I thought about in terms of sending them to, oh, my God, I've forgotten the planet's name. Jupiter. No, where was he sending them back to? What's his home planet? Uh, Urken Empire. Yeah, Ur- yeah, he was sending them back there. So <laughs> the couple of things that I um, picked out was, um, so one was with the sending them back to the Urken Empire. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And also with the suit. He has so much power and technology. Why he created a suit that would be potentially altered over time instead of just sort of... I guess, maintaining the level of Santaness that it needed. So I think the overall plan probably wouldn't change too much. However, I think I would change the suit. So it would be maybe you kidnap the Santas as he did, continue that, but actually just maybe take a little bit more time or kidnap a few extra ones to get all the information from them. Maybe kidnap a couple of children as well, get their thoughts <laughs> on what Santa is as well To you, you know, like kind of just get a well-rounded, mm-hmm and then build the suit with all of the information there and don't make it one that's going to absorb more Christmas cheer. (laughs) Basically have it as a, it is what it is, this is Santa, and then I think everybody obviously falls in love with him. You can probably, you can still make modifications along the way if you need to. He has the technology, but I don't think that the way it was built was the right way. And I think as well, as I was doing that, what I would do knowing that Dib is likely to try and come along and destroy my plan is I would just keep him in a cage somewhere or distract him with something else. No, he got out because he was the thing that got him in the end <laughs> um, because he went to his dad and got all of the, um, well, sorry, the, his clone the self. Anti-Santa <laughs> <laughs> the anti-Santa arsenal. The anti-Santa arsenal. That he made when he was a child. <laughs> but yeah, so do you, like, so, but I feel like because Dib usually tries to overthrow him sort of like outwit him or whatever is actually distract him somehow you know create a hologram of yourself doing something else so he doesn't or whatever it may be Mm. or kidnap him put him in a prison for until christmas or whatever it is but then with the um transporter teleporter thing don't put them on your your home planet put them somewhere else or just put them floating out into space because if the goal is that you're killing all humans or getting rid of every all the humans on earth don't put them occupying your home planet right no put them out in space yeah and Mm. then they're gone Mm. and then they're just enjoying the el spache (laughs) my favorite place (laughs) jim's favorite place they're just (laughs) how dare you sully my favorite place like that ever um, but would you not enjoy that? Maybe maybe even for Jim, if Jim's on Earth, maybe you don't even need to say um, you just, you know, you go into some You just nice, get to go nice to space, place. you'll die. Jim, you get to go to space and you'll be like, yeah, all right, I'll stand under this teleporter. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like the, the space port from the end of Portal 2. Yeah, it's like the greatest two seconds of your life until you, you die. Space! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that, Jim. Um, but that's my my plan. I feel like that would have worked better for him. Spache. Um, all right, I guess I'm going next. You are. Second tallest. Second tallest. <laughs> Reporting in. <laughs> Carrying on from my tradition of keeping my plans nice and simple this season. Sorry, my only real change to, to Zim's plan is um to make it so that the teleporter itself is actually inside some sort of archway that says, like, to the present room. So that when, like, people run in to try mm-hmm. and collect to their Christmas mm. presents, like they get teleported away. So, like, I'm, I'm thinking making it look Ooh. like a like a Disneyland kind of deal, you know, like lots of pomp and colours and, you know, big signs saying this way to the presents. And then you say, all right, everyone, in you go. Go get your presents. Wow. And then Ooh. they all go. That's actually quite Ooh. clever. Well done, Jim. Nice. Because that was the whole thing. They were like <laughs> that one, like, weird-looking <laughs> yeah. dude was like, uh, where, I want my present where's, first. Where's my presents? And he <laughs> was like, there's, present. Present. He's yes. like, there's presents in the teleporter. And they were like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay. But you're sending us to our doom. My favorite one was the girl who was like, can I get a present before I go to my doom? Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, I so feel you, little point. girl. I feel you. I, yeah, I also feel you. Um, oh, that's, uh, okay. Yeah, fair. All right. Any notes? No, can't, can't really poke it. I guess the only thing there that would potentially, I guess, unravel would be the same thing as actually what unraveled in the actual episode itself in terms of the suit and the dib suit and, and dib and whatever, and dib and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, like as yeah. unlikely as all of Zim's plan, like having worked, that was the actual bottleneck of the whole plan. People built the tell. He got everyone to, ma- uh, to build the teleporter, yeah. and they did not go in. Because they wanted presents. They were like, Where, where's my gosh darn Christmas presents? <laughs> exactly. People but then are I think, weird in that universe. But then, yeah, they're really strange. But Anne, isn't <laughs> so the good. point that yeah. they wouldn't go in because they know if they've built it, they know that the presents aren't in there? Well, no, no, no. You tell them, I don't know. Like, my plan is like you you, you get into people's heads psychologically, <laughs> like in the same way that Disneyland does with, you know, like big colors, bright, shiny things, you know, like this I, way, let's go. I do love Disneyland. Mm. It's only a six hour wait. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, he, even, uh, he even had like an evil Christmas carol. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. But do you know what the worst about um, the long lines at Disneyland or World or whatever is, is when you get given the sign to like help them see how long it takes to get to the front and when you're waiting mm-hmm. forever, but then you feel like you've been given this like responsibility that you have to make it to the front. You can't just leave. Ooh. Yeah. It's a real thing. Have you have you been to Disneyland since they started putting the times on the app? No. Oh, wow. Maybe, but I didn't have the app, no. Oh, uh, it's a real game changer. I, I tells you. There's two, there's two things. There's one is like the calculus of like standing in a super long line and being like, hey, look, Indiana Jones has dropped down by 40 minutes. Let's go. Uh, Or like standing in a line and like being like, this is taking forever. It said it was only going to take 10 minutes. And then looking at the app and it says now it says like 50 minutes. You're like, God. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. No, like, because when I went, the couple of times that I've been, it's had, like, well, when was the last time I went? When did D and I go to the States? Like, that was a few years ago now. They did have, like, pretty realistic and reliable, like, time things. So mm. it wasn't like a, oh, potentially this. It, like, had a digital timer there. But yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't think the app was a thing at the time. But that's a good idea. Also, we should probably just say, now is not the time to go to theme parks. Uh, stay home. Don't get COVID. Yeah, stay home. Merry Christmas. The home can be your theme park if you're listening to world domination. I was seeing ads <laughs> for um, trying to get people to go to, like, Gold Coast and go to um, Movie World and Dream World and stuff. Though. Yeah, those places uh, weren't exactly financially solvent to begin mm, with. So, like. No. I do love movie world though. Mm. The only place I remember the ad for is Jamboree, where you control the, the action. action. Yeah, it was great. Jamboree is not great though. <laughs> no, it's really not, is it? No, no. I, I got. I remember I went one time and I thought I was so excited for it. It wasn't great. No, mm. so much ad. This is the power of marketing. I tells you. They have a great marketing team, but the the park itself, no. But yeah, no, this no, is no. why I, re- I really feel like um, my plan is going to work because the people in this universe are just very gullible. <laughs> I mean, they built a bloody teleporter. What's the line that Dib says? Remember last year when you thought an escaped gorilla was Santa? <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, <laughs> did we? <laughs> <laughs> and then he fainted after finding out. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy who's like, robot elves, just like the stories. And they're like, what stories? <laughs> 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 they really yeah. are dumb. They really are done. I love them. Um, yeah, look, other than the, I guess, yeah, as, as Ken said, that it was, I guess, the bottleneck probably even if he, if, if the, I guess the timing was the same thing, he probably would have gotten a lot of people through those uh, pearly gates. Yeah. Like if, I was just thinking like if Dib was going to come or whatever or if he was going to turn into Santa, it all kind of happened when that bottleneck was happening. So I guess that kind of mm. works, but that would potentially be the only thing that I'd throw yeah. out in terms yeah. of the suit itself. If everybody was getting really excited about it, the likelihood of more Christmas cheer. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right. You little pipsqueak, tell us your plan, Ken. Wow. The smallest. I'm the third tallest out of three. Therefore, the smallest. <laughs> Aww. Damn it, I'm getting sent to the ravenous rat planet, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, my plan. The first part is exactly the same, okay? <laughs> so the Santa suit stays the same, uh, mm. and he still holds the Christmas rally, but instead of trying to get everyone to build a teleporter for him to go to uh, uh, the Urken Empire, uh, as soon as the president relinquishes uh, the power to him, 
he should start an election and he should oh present Zim as the candidate uh, for uh, having power over the world for the other 364 days of the year. You mean Santa, I assume. He, as Santa, rules the uh, rules the world for one day, basically. But what are the other 364 days? He should try and like put someone else in as a ruler and that should be Zim. So Santa, uh, Zim as Santa should recommend Zim as Zim to be the ruler of the world for the rest of the year. But yes, also, uh, yes, also put Dib in a better cage. <laughs> I love that he, he puts him in like the jail made of candy canes just because like he thought it was go- funny. <laughs> yes. Put him in the real cage this time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, why I say like to put just put him in for three hundred sixty four days. If he get, if he gets voted out, then next Christmas he can come back as Santa and put him back into office. And uh, if you want to speed things up and sh- really show your superiors how well you're doing, like you know, if you want them to get involved straight away, you can uh, you know form a treaty. With the Urken Empire as as the representative of Earth, oh and God. take over them straight away. Isn't the point of him taking over the world? Isn't he supposed to be getting rid of the humans? The the I will say the tallest plans are very vague. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> Ken's just like yes, yes, yes. They are. yes. Exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. Okay, it's like. You know, does taking over the world with the comfiest couches mean you need to burn all the couches? Uh, I don't think so. Like, you know, it's very vague. You know, it depends on how the uh, Urken Empire assesses the humans. You know, if mm. they were, if they really wanted to kill them all, he, Z- Zim probably wouldn't teleport them directly into their spaceship, but rather, like you, teleported them directly into space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's my no, I get you. I'm getting a real husky voice. Husky <laughs> voice. They love my plan. Woo! I think, yeah, I, look, I think it just comes down to, I guess, what we what is classified as the whole, like, taking over, but you're right. Like, there's no nothing to say that the goal was to kill them all. Mm-hmm. Rather yeah. than just kind of implied by his actions, yeah. And yeah. also, as gullible as humans are in this universe, they think great slaves. I actually don't <laughs> don't put that in. Cut that out. Cut that out. That's not very PG. Why they say that? They say that in, in the show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zim says that the 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 Urken are coming to make humans their slaves in this episode. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. Okay. Dilemma sorted. All right, we should vote. We should. Mm. All right, are we ready? One, two. Three, Ken. Jim. Ken. Yay! Well done, Ken. Why has nobody voted for me at all this season, you bastards? Oh. I knew it wasn't going to win, but it voted me nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. This is why it's bloody rigged. We both really like Disneyland entrance. Just because dad, Jim's dad's fan club doesn't like me and didn't think that I should have won. <laughs> Vote against me. They do speak as a monolithic block. That is true. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, no, you know, if I was invited to Christmas with duck fat potatoes and ham, the next year might be different. Yeah, Emma, all it takes is some bribery. Yeah, bribery. <laughs> I refuse to bribe. I will win fair and square. <laughs> You're never <laughs> getting another vote. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> Emma. It's rigged. It's rigged, rigged. I tells you. <laughs> the problem is that it's not rigged. Uh, so what's your headline, Ken? I got 99 presents and a Zim ain't one. Well done. Yay! Well done. Thank you, thank you. Keep talking, Ken. Tell us about today's sponsor, Ken. Yes, today's sponsor <laughs> is brought to you by Santa's Little Hamper Suit. Aw, Kids, cute. do you like Christmas? <laughs> yeah. I do. Ooh, do you like the sound of roasted ham, roasted uh-huh. turkey? Ooh. Very much so. That's what I meant it for, the sound of the ham. <laughs> the sound of ham. Crinkly ham. I mean, what? Sorry. Crackling ham. Christmas cake. Custard mm. gingerbread. Ooh. Candy canes. Yes. Eggnog. Yes. Mm. Mince pies? No. no. And most importantly, <laughs> Santa? Yes. yes. Well, look no further, as Dumb Ad Nation has the complete package. We bring you our Santa's little hamper suit. <laughs> 
Do you mean like hamper is in like a hamper full of gifts? Or do you mean like hamper is in like to hinder? Uh, no, no. Ham- oh, maybe both. I was thinking like a hamper suit, but I don't actually know what it is. It's like a Santa suit, but it's like a hamper. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All of this in a Santa suit with a memory foam pillow added to seal in all the juices. Mm. Oh. Ooh. And in the Christmas <laughs> spirit, none, none of the items are individually wrapped to save the environment. Santa's home is in the North Pole, and he thanks you for that. Let's hear from our user testimonials. I tells you, the thing I hate the most is having to unwrap things in the hamper. I get my fingers all greasy from opening the ham, and then I can't get into any of the other things in the hamper. You heard that, right? <laughs> it's like a trifle in a Santa suit with actual trifle and everything else Christmas. So is this just like trifle and ham and candy canes and everything all just like in one? Yes. Cool. Cool. Yes, suitable for Christmas dinner, probably at your in-laws. Or possibly Emma's house. Uh, Not suitable for children or people with allergies. I'm just going to say it's got every allergen uh, in there, so... We crammed them all in there. (laughs) They said it couldn't be done. Uh, Yeah, it's got a lifetime guarantee if you eat anything inside, but it's your lifetime, not the suit's lifetime. Where can I purchase one of these goods and or services? (laughs) (laughs) I don't quite know what I'm buying. Just look up in the sky. If you see a reindeer, you're probably high already and, you know, just, just... You know, t- ask your dealer. You've probably already eaten that ham. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the raddest Christmas ever. <laughs> but I, I don't understand. So is it like a suit that I put on and then like put my hand inside the suit that I'm wearing and just pull out food? I'm picturing like a Santa print Snuggie with like food in like some like arm pockets. See, whereas I was picturing one of those like inflatable like Santa suits and like yeah. you just like put your hand inside and then there's like, oh, sweet. I got ham in this hand and I've got trifle in the other hand guess what both hands ham <laughs> buy yours today <laughs> buy yours today <laughs> oh anywho oh man i'm tired well thanks for listening everyone <laughs> hey. uh that was a uh yeah look great one that was an episode yes it, that it, was an episode it, yes it definitely was an episode there was definitely a conversation that was had yes mm-hmm. but for those who haven't watched invader zim can recommend it is a great show it's good to just have on have a bit of a laugh and enjoy yourself. And so thanks for for coming on the journey with yes. us tonight, yeah. friend. Thanks for listening. Yep. Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas. And if you have a spare seat at your Christmas lunch slash dinner and need someone there, just let me know. I feel like by the time this comes out, Ken, it'll be too late. Ah, damn it. So thank you for inviting Ken to your Christmas lunch or dinner. He had thank a great you, time. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Merry Christmas, friends, and thanks for joining us. See you next year. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. See you next year. See you next year. Bye. 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 Call me. <laughs> Merry Platypus, one and all. Thanks for listening to World Domination. You can find links to all of the things we've talked about, our other episodes, our merch, and our social media accounts at anchor.fm slash worlddomination. If you'd like to tell us something, feel free to get in touch. And remember, if you enjoyed the show, make sure to tell your mum about it.